If you're listening to this recording, it means I'm dead already. Oh, wait a second. Oh, that's a different recording. Here's what's coming up on The Nice Guys today. But if you want to be a great leader, you know, you have to have a hunger for psychology. You, you've got to have a hunger for wanting to understand people. If you don't like people, you have no right to be a leader. Do you have an iPhone or something inferior? I have an iPhone. <laughs> no, no, no judgment there. <laughs> no bias whatsoever. That's good to see. The Nice Guys needs your support. Please go to patreon.com forward slash nice guys. And for as little as $2 a month, you can help them keep the lights on and get bonus content too. Now, on to the show for whatever it's worth. Need an education on how to grow your business? The nice guys are here to help. Learn about great customer service, networking, and how just being nice can help you prosper. Now, here are your hosts, Doug Sandler and Strickland Bonner. Hey, nice guy community. Welcome back. Welcome back. Thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Strickland Bonner. On the other side of the microphone, Mr. Doug Sandler. And today is the day, Doug. I am I am more excited about today than on episode zero. Did, we never <laughs> did an episode zero. No? Should you know, we have done of, an episode zero? I don't know. I see a lot of professional podcasters that had an episode zero. It was like their introduction show. And I, you know what? It just fucks up all the numbers, though. Yeah, we're about two years late for that, I think. So oh, that's okay. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, so what's our big news, Drake? Big news, Patreon site is launching today. Today is the day that you can actually go and donate to the Nice Guys on Business and help us keep the lights on. If you want to actually see a totally off the rails, fucked up video of me and Strickland, <laughs> go to <laughs> patreon.com forward slash nice guys. We'll be right there. It'll also explain the different levels that you can uh, contribute to our show. We, you know, we gave up on the advertising thing. It just wasn't for us. It was too much pressure. I didn't like it. I'd much rather beg than, than pressure advertisers. <laughs> it's much easier. You can donate for as little as two bucks a month to help out the podcast. So, Strick, if somebody wanted to give a dollar a month, would they even be able to do that? Not right now, but I'm hoping that anybody that's going to take the time to actually go click the link, that they don't have a problem donating $2 a month okay. instead of a dollar. But you know what? If people complain about it, you could text. Um, you could text. Well, you could text Doug, actually. Um, <laughs> you could reach out on Twitter to Doug at DJ Doug or reach out to me at Nice Guy on Biz and basically say, hey, can you make a $1 level? And then we would make it. But I don't know that anybody's going to do that. I, you know, for the difference between $12 a year or $24 a year, I'm pretty sure that we're worth a trip to the movies. You know, and that's exactly what I was thinking, Doug. Like you, the listener, out of your pocket. The difference between, and we're not talking $12 a month, $12 a year, right? <laughs> Versus $24 a year. What I'm thinking to myself is, you know what? I, I don't think anybody that would donate 12 is going to not donate at, t at $2 a month. And it means so much more to us. It would be so much more helpful. And as you were saying that, Strick, I was thinking, I, I, I doubt highly that, that I'm even going to be alive in an, another year. <laughs> It's not going to happen. I mean, statistically, the chances are very good that I will be dead within a year. Yeah, it's very possible. Very possible. <laughs> it really is. So you really have nothing to lose because Stray can't continue the show without me. It's impossible because right. it's called the nice guys on business. We'd have to either get rid of the artwork. That would be taking an S off or uh, or he'd have to just dump the show. And it'd probably just be easier to dump the show than get an art an artist to take the S off. Don't you, think? you know, Penn and Teller have this great gag where, where Penn is in a or Teller is in a, a, a a water tank right yeah. and, and he dies in the water tank oh. and s supposedly right they think he's right. dead and and pen like when he's doing this when he realizes the teller is dead he reaches down to some of the audience to get of like the the flyer of like hey what's going to happen on the show uh -huh. and he's looking at it going no 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 oh, oh wait a minute, here we go here's one and he starts doing a trick like he's looking through the list like okay which ones of these can i do by myself um not that one not that one. Oh, okay here's one i can do by myself and and he's like in this water tank dead like on the stage right yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's very funny so it's uh, that, that, but I know this is not a a, a shoot the shit day, and we can we can riff on this about on on Thursday. But like, what what would happen? I I don't Strick. I don't think I would want to continue. I mean, I'm not going to pull like a, a Kelly and Regis and Kelly or a Regis and Kathy Lee thing on you and just start to look for another host. I, I think I'd have to, I have a whole new show. I, I think we need to, we should talk about this more tomorrow. We'll make sure and put this on the list to talk about tomorrow. Cause right now we do have an, a guest today, Dolph Barron, and he's got a great book called fiercely loyal, how high performing companies develop and retain top talent. And that is what it's all about. It's because you may be able to hire somebody great, but you got to be able to keep them and you got to keep them happy. Right? 
What's what's cool about Dove is and and his book is great and and I did meet him through um, the C Suite Network and that makes it even better because we have a, a strong connection there. But one of the things I really love most about him is he has a program called Full Monty Leadership. I mean, do you know what Full Monty means? Yeah, like naked, right? <laughs> yeah, completely the naked. The Full Monty. Yeah, and and so he's got he's just he's very um, non traditional with his leadership approach. He uh, created this viral campaign. Well, when you create a campaign, you never know if it's going to go viral or not. But he did create a campaign that went viral. It's called Kill the Keynote. Over five million followers of Kill the Keynote. So uh, definitely check him out. Uh, Dove Barron, very cool guy, nice guy, leader guy, leadership through and through. And when you hear him on the podcast, you will know. Very quickly, this is a guy that uh, that probably won't take shit from anybody. I, I was a little intimidated when I first met him. Um, we shared a stage together in uh, in New York when we were on a panel. There was four of us, um, and I'm blanking on the other two because Dove was like there was four of us up on the on the stage. But the only guy that had an opportunity, everybody everybody's questions were, "Hey, Dove." Uh, <laughs> I kept thinking, well, okay, but I mean, they're paying me. I guess I should sit up on the stage for a little bit longer. But uh, <laughs> but Dove was asked all the questions. It felt it felt really good to have such a strong leader, and that's really what it, he really shares with the Nice Guy community today in this interview is all about leadership. It's all about how to be a leader that is recognized, how to be a leader that people want to follow, and uh, and are you born into a position of leadership, or can you uh, can you really uh, rise to your leadership role? So. We chat about that on the uh, on the podcast today. Good questions, good stuff to answer, and uh, definitely things that I think will be very helpful to all of our listeners. So uh, the promise statement, Doug, why don't you go ahead and give the promise statement? Promise statement is to, uh, yeah, it's right here, <laughs> right in front of me. Let me just, wow, it's all the way at the bottom of this, to provide a learning experience that is entertaining and adds value to your life. If we uh, are up to that, uh, please let us know. If we're not up to that, please let us know. Also, at Nice Guy on Biz with a Z is Strickland's Twitter handle. Mine as is at DJ Doug. Uh, and of course, uh, we would love to hear from you to uh, to hear how we are doing on the show. Our download count is way, way, way up uh, for the month of February. Uh, again, over 40,000 downloads. Thank you, Nice Guy community. Well, let's make sure that happens. Let's try to get to 50,000 in the month of March. I think we really, we're on a trend to be able to do that this month, Rick. Could how, how cool would that be? Let's get to our interview. Dove Barron, the Nice Guys on Business podcast. It is right here. Dove, take it away. Leadership, loyalty, and all things in between is what we're going to discuss with today's guest, Dove Barron. Well, let's see. If I read all the titles of his books, uh, we'd actually run out of time for the show. I lost count somewhere around 10 highly acclaimed books. He's a professional speaker, obviously an author, video podcaster, social media star, the creator of Full Monty Leadership, and so much more. Welcome to the Nice Guys on Business, Dove Barron. Thanks, Doug. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. I'm honored to uh, be of service to you and to your listeners. I, I, I really, I really, this is this is one of those interviews that in the preparing mode and in the prepare, preparation stages, I was getting excited because, you know, Doug, we had a chance to uh, to share a stage in New York and your presence to the audience. It was really, it was kind of larger than life. I mean, there were six of us on stage, but all of the questions kept coming back to you. <laughs> so I don't know that that was true, but you're very <laughs> kind. Thank you. <laughs> So my question is about, or kind of about that. So can one be a leader without being larger than life, Dove? Yeah, it's got nothing to do with being larger than life. So first thing I want everybody to understand is, yeah, I'm, I am a big personality. That's, you know, that's pretty clear and, and I don't hide that. But what you should know is I'm actually naturally very shy. I'm actually a shy person. I'm not comfortable in a new social setting. It, it's difficult for me. I have to push myself to that place. So being a leader is not about naturally being this bubbly person, not at all. In fact, some of the great leaders are quite quiet. Uh, and It's about being present with. That's what leadership is when it comes to being with another. It's being totally present with more than it is being a big personality because a big personality can make it all about them mm -hmm. versus being with it makes it all about the person they're with. I totally agree with what you're saying. So what do you think are some of the key traits that hold people back 
from that position of leadership? Because in your particular case, and and I, I completely relate to and understand what you're saying when you say, although you have a larger than life personality and style, you do you are kind of a shy person, and I can see that in some of the conversations that that we have is that 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 is one of the characteristics of probably of a good leader. So, but what yeah. is some of the things that hold people back from a position of leadership, Dov? I think there's a whole range of things. As you know, I have a big background in psychology, um, but there's a whole range of things that hold people back from being a a great leader. I mean, I think that first and foremost, great leadership is dependent upon the desire to serve. So, you know, you can be a leader and not serve. You'll never be a great leader. That's the difference. So the desire to serve, the understanding that this is about something bigger than me, that I've got to serve the people that I'm leading, but I'm also serving a vision for all of us to step into. And if you if you can't grasp that, if this is all about you, then, then you're going to be in your own way. You're going to sabotage yourself. But then again, there's the belief. So am I willing to believe in my leadership? One of the great wake-up calls for me, I mean, I've been a speaker, as you know, for more than 30 years. Mm-hmm. About uh, 16, 17 years ago, I was teaching a five-day program, intensive and at the end of that program, people are very kind. They stand up and they, you know, they want to come up and thank you. And it's very kind and generous of them. But I'm also very focused on making sure that people did get something. So when people line up and say, I want to say thank you, I, my answer is always for what specifically. And so I make them come to what it is. And this lady took a moment and she lined up for a long time. She took a moment and she answered and she said, for my grandchildren. Now, she was a youngish woman. I mean, she was in her early 40s. Mm -hmm. And I said, you have grandchildren? And she said, no. And I said, I don't understand. She goes, well, that's my daughter over there. She's pregnant. And I said, okay. And she says, because of what I've learned from you, it will impact the relationship I have with my daughter and in turn impact the relationship with my grandchildren. It will impact my daughter's relationship with her child. And it may impact several generations. And And I busted out i mean like my eyes immediately sprung leaks (laughs) because i realized that leadership is not always about what's directly in front of you it's about the impact you have over a longer period of time it's that you are the rock that drops into the middle of the pond and you may never see the waves that hit that that hit the uh the shore but knowing that you're leading from that place that you're leading multi-generationally that you're leading a ripple effect that is what will make you a great leader. You hit it right on the mark. And the interpretation that I have from the couple of times that we've gotten together, uh, whether it was in person or, or online, is that leaders really do know how to give back. It's not what can they take from their group. It's actually what can they give to their group. Uh, the question is, you know, the question that you ask all the time is, what can I do for you? And sometimes, not from you, but from others that are asking that question, it's such a disingenuine statement. It's like, oh my gosh, seriously, what can you do for me? You can get out of my face. Yeah. It's the first thing you do for me. But when yeah. you ask it, it really does, it really does mean something. It, it how do you create, you have to create that feeling. It's got to be a genuine um, uh, feeling that you're giving to the person that you are with. How do you create a relationship that is that tight and that, even if you're just saying something from stage, people feel that from you. So uh, how do you create that genuine feel? You know, I think for me, uh, first of all, it is an attitude of gratitude, and, but that's a cliche. Mm-hmm. Um, but what it really is, is, as you know, Doug, because you've been on stage with me and because you've been around me, um, the foundation of my, my company is called is Full Monty Leadership, which means to reveal it all, to let it all out. To So if I'm genuinely revealing myself, if I'm genuinely embracing vulnerability, which we as leaders have been trained, and this is one of the things you'll get in your own way with as a leader. Yeah. We're trained to, to hide and not let people see us. We're not we're supposed to let people see the chink in our armor. But the truth is that that is what bonds people to you. And so when you say, how can I be of service to you? How can I be here for you? And you've already revealed who you are and you've revealed your warts and all, then you, you're obviously a real, genuine person. And as a result of that, people are willing to, to see you that way and believe that you're real when you say, how can I help? So it starts with vulnerability. Vulnerability for me is the foundation 
of great leadership. It's the exact opposite of what we were trained in. I walked into a meeting yesterday with a, with a corporate team that I'm working with, and you know something was going on, and I said, look, hold on a sec, let's just take a step back, and I immediately shared something vulnerable about me, and took the blame away, because that's what was happening, took the blame away from what was going on in the situation, and had them shift perspective. Until we can be vulnerable, we don't really reach anybody, and we've got to grasp that. I want to come back in just a couple of moments about the, uh, you, you touched on it just briefly, the Full Monty Leadership Program that you have, and I want to explain that, but I, I want to ask another question first, because I think this is probably going to be uh, maybe just a part of having some more people actually tune in. They might be listening to the show, but sometimes you're listening and you're not really tuned into what you're listening to. <laughs> Share, share with the Nice Guy community, those that are listening today, can anyone be a leader and can leaders be created or do they have to be born this way? Now, I know you, ta- you touched upon that, yeah, it, it's not that everybody can be a leader, but we, I think we can create them. Are, they, are we born this way or can you, we actually be created? Yeah, I think it's, it's a great question it's, and it's as old as the hills, right? Are leaders born or are they, or are they made? And the truth of the matter is that I think there are certain people who are born into that position. They, they have the, the right genetics, the right social conditioning, the right familial conditioning. But if we rely on that, we're going to be pretty stuck for leaders because, <laughs> you know, if they're one in 20,000, that would be a lot. But they're not. So leaders are actually created. And I think that leaders are created by two means. One, by circumstance, meaning the situation demands it and and you step up into it. And the other is by self-examination. All great leaders, and I mean truly great leaders, have self-knowledge. You know the the quote, a life um, unexamined is a life half-lived. And so great leaders are constantly self-reflecting. I can't understand you if I don't understand me. I can't have compassion for you if I don't know what compassion for me is. I can't have empathy for you if I don't have empathy for myself. I can't grasp your vision if I don't grasp my vision. So I've got to be willing to self-examine first. And that means looking at, at the wards, looking at the things that I need to improve. Yes, we want to be strength-based leaders, but we can't, that doesn't mean we ignore or deny the things that are underneath that, that are potentially shadows that can – negatively impact the way that we lead. So I, I, the leaders that I've seen who are spectacular are not what you would expect. They're not the people with the big bravado personality. Some of them are, but mostly they're people who started out not particularly wanting to be a leader. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was never really on my list to be a leader, but I am. I know that that's what I am. And I know in many ways that's what I've always been. But I've been it without ever having that title. I've been it because I was driven to understand people. And if you want to be a great leader, you you know you have to have a hunger for psychology. You you got to have a hunger for wanting to understand people. If you don't like people, you have no right to be a leader. <laughs> yeah, that's so that's so true. I, you um old school philosophy really tells us that leadership is that ivory tower guy, that one that is the staunch, uh, you know, the one that leads with uh, with an ironclad fist. Uh, but as I'm looking and reading and researching information about your Full Monty Leadership Program and the things that we're about to talk about now, first of all, Full Monty Leadership sounds like a stage show, and I think you introduced it as that as on one of your videos. Uh, I love what Full Monty Leadership is all about. It's so genuine. So can you take a step back and, and go back and talk about uh, some of the specifics of Full Monty Leadership so that we can show, share with the Nice Guy community what that's all about? Uh, the premise of its uh, of Full Monty itself is if you saw the movie, The Full Monty, um, it was about a bunch of English guys who were in terrible shape who were unemployed and broke and they wanted to make some money and uh, some strippers come through and like a Chippendales type thing and they come through and of course the women are going crazy and throwing money at them and they're like, whoa, that's good, they get money. <laughs> so they decide they're going to do the same and of course they fail miserably because you know they're not 22 years old and buff. <laughs> you know, the, the midlife crisis guys who are melting, they're defrosting, <laughs> let alone being in shape. Right, right, right. And, and so they go out and they fail, and then they say, well, okay, well, and, and this is a great branding thing. They're actually looking for their point of differentiation. And the point of differentiation, they realize, is that nobody takes it all off. No, And the British term is nobody goes full Monty. So they decide they're going to take it all off, and they become a raving success. Now, 
here's the point that I want you to get. It's not that they took it all off and they showed the Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. <laughs> hey, wait, hold on a second. Hold on. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Yeah, that's a first. Never mention, never mention your junk as a uh, as a Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory before. I love this. Okay, all right, go ahead. <laughs> but it's the fact that they took it all off, warts and all. Meaning they didn't go to the gym and suddenly get into wicked good shape. They still were soft in the middle and and a bit sort of defrosting in the physical sense. Right. So that is what Full Monty is. It's the willingness to reveal it all, but not reveal it all so, oh, look at my perfection, but rather to reveal it all. So it's stripping away the titles and the layers so that we're connecting on a human level. You know, the truth of the matter is, you know, as you know, my last book was called Fiercely Loyal, Yeah. how high-performing companies develop and retain top talent. You cannot today retain top talent. You will not be able to keep the best of the best if they don't feel a connection to you, the human being, and to your personal purpose, which is part of Full Monty Leadership, is finding your purpose so that your company's purpose becomes at the fore. Because you want your people to bond to you, the human being, you, the leader with a purpose, and the company with a purpose, and that has to tie to them and you can't tie it to them if you don't find out who they are. Walk, if you're listening to this, watching this right now, and you're a C-suite individual, if you're a leader in any way, shape, or form, my challenge to you is, is to ask you, do you really know your people? And I guarantee that most of you will say yes. And invariably, I'm sorry, you're wrong. What, and, you, and you'll know the people less that you've worked with a long time because you take things for granted. Go out and ha take each of your people every day, take one person, a different person for coffee and ask them about them and shut up, <laughs> shut up, stop being a boss, ask them about them, ask them about their kids, ask them about their dreams, ask them about their goals. And when they ask you, when they say, can I ask you, always say yes and then tell the truth. You will have fiercely, fiercely loyal employees, people who are evangelical about your organization. You know, it's just this simple. Everyone on this planet wants to be seen. Everybody on this planet wants someone to acknowledge their existence. We're all running around like chickens with our heads cut off, trying to get recognized, to be, to be held in some esteem. Give it to your people. How do you do it? Be vulnerable first. Share something vulnerable about you, and then ask about them and shut up and listen. Can we can we spend just a, a moment talking about part of the problem with most of pe <laughs> of most of most of upper level management is that they see that that sh showing that tilting you know showing your cards showing the full Monty is a sign of weakness. You know, we all have, we all have, and this is, again, this is maybe old school. This is not how I think a 30 and a 40-year-old leader today works, but I think the 50 and 60 and 70-year-old leaders, they look at this and they say, you know, screw that. That is, that's weakness, and I can't show weakness as a leader. What do you, can you comment about that? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a great question, Doug, because it's so common. So in the work that we do when we go into companies and even in the work that I do as a mentor one on one, I work one on one with clients, you know, it, it's it's the it's the base conditioning of leadership, which is you don't let them see the chink in your armor, you don't let them see any of your vulnerabilities. And, and the truth is it just doesn't work. It doesn't work anymore. Now I get that the leaders say, Well, you know, that's just not how I am. No, it's just not how you were conditioned. It's not who you are. Mm -hmm. And I say to them, how do I know? Do you have a best friend? And they'll say, yes. Do you keep the same walls you do with your best friend as you do with your staff? No, of course not. My best friend. What's the difference? Aren't you the same person? Well, I have to have a persona at work. No, you actually don't. So here's the thing I want you to understand. And I'm going to have everybody really grasp this for a minute. Okay, yeah. I'll give you two very quick, clear, stunning examples. On one side, I want you in your mind to imagine that on the right-hand side of you, you have somebody standing in front of you, just to the right, who is a really loyal, trusted friend. You've known them for, let's say, 10 years. Loyal, trusted friend. On the other side of you, on the left-hand side, you have another person you've also known for 10 years, but this is not a trusted friend. It's somebody you know, 
you don't dislike them, but they're an acquaintance, you know. Mm -hmm. So you, what's the difference between those two people? Well, you might say, well, you know, you come up with all kinds of stuff, but I'll tell you what it is because we don't have time to go into it. What it is is the person on the right, the person who is the trusted, loyal friend, they know your shit and you know theirs. And the, the person that you have as an acquaintance, you haven't opened up to. There is no mutual reciprocity of vulnerability. The people you love, the people you care about are the people whose stuff you know I mean, you know what you know what they've gone through. You know their struggles. The people who love you deeply are the ones who know your struggle. The people who love you genuinely don't see you as perfect, and the ones who do see you as perfect are completely detached from you because you're you're some unavailable uh, person on a pedestal they will never have a connection with. If you think that vulnerability is weakness, I want to give you an example that for me is in my book. It's called the Hawk Effect. In, before I moved to North America, I lived in Australia for many years, and in the 1980s, there was a leader called Bob Hawke. Bob Hawke was the leader of the Labour Party. He had been a member of the trade unions. He was a man's man, a real good Aussie, hard-drinking, hard-fighting guy. And he eventually became the Prime Minister of Australia. And as the leader of Australia, you know, he was very popular to going into that, but actually ended up being a really bad leader, um, let the country down in all kinds of ways, dropped the ball so many different times. The election came up, and as the election was coming up, um, there was an expose on how Bob's Haw Bob Hawke's two daughters were both drug addicts, one of whom was was um, diving from crack house to crack house, and they had a kid. Mm -hmm. and, and he could never, you know, they were, he was... It was just a, a terrible show, and he was him and his wife Hazel were taking care of the grandchild, trying to you know keep her clean and away from the mother. This all came out horrible news, you know, terrible thing. Here's the guy supposed to be leading our country. The next night, Andrew Peacock, the leader of the opposition, came on TV and said, you know, here's this guy he's supposed to be looking after the country, can't even look after his own family. You know, he's let us down. He's a disappointment. You know, all of those kinds of things, and really lambasted him. And at that point, it was pretty clear that, that Peacock was going to win the general election. Yeah. But in Australia in those days, by law, you had to give equal time to the oppositions, of, uh, to both sides of the party. So the following night, um, they interviewed Bob Hawke. Now, Bob Hawke, this tough Aussie, you know, like I said, labor union guy, you know, never showed any feelings. He was, he was the pinnacle of what we've been talking about, about the – impenetrable leader who right. never showed anything. Right. And they asked him and said, is it true about your daughters? And he said, you know, I just need to apologize to the Australian people. I have let this country down. I did not do my job. He goes, and then he tells the story of his daughters and the drugs and the, and the grandchild. He says, and he says, but I got to tell you, I love Australia, but my family is first. And I really apologize, and I know I've let you down, and that's all I can tell you. He won by a landslide. Wow. When he when people so sixty minutes went out on the street to interview people after the general election and asked them why they voted for Bob Hawke. You know the simple answer? He was one of us. Right. He's one of us. We all have families. We've all been through struggles. We all understand that. And, of course, we know he's a good Aussie. We know he believes in us. We know he, he loves his country. But, of course, that's got to – things happen with family. We understand that. And he went on to become Australia's uh, longest-serving prime minister. I, I mean, I can remember working for a number of large companies when I first got out of college. And the thing that was so um, unrelatable to me was as you went up the chain, the further you went up the, the, to the C-suite, the C-level, those guys, began, they were untouchable. They would, they would say and have the appearance that they were touchable, but they were so sterile. I mean, if I looked at their inbox, it was probably if, – if they had email even at that time, it would probably have been zero emails in their inbox. Totally unrelatable to me and my teammates too, which made it – very challenging to want to give to an organization when you have, uh, you know, a, a, a non-authentic uh, leader at the top. Yeah, and that, you know, full multi-leadership 
is about authenticity and people will come and say to me, how do I be more authentic? And it makes me, I'm sorry, I know I don't mean to. No, I, 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 it makes me laugh because it's a good question. It's just, it it is a tough question to answer. So what's your spin on that? How do you become an authentic leader? I I mean, I think (laughs) I know I have the answer in my head, but what is it for you? You know, when you're saying to me, how do I become more authentic? What you're actually saying to me is how do I be more of me? Right, right, exactly. That's why it's funny, right? So you're saying, how do I be more of me? The answer is you stop being what isn't you. Yeah. So you look at where do I fake it? Where do I not reveal myself? Now, please understand, because I know right now there's somebody listening who's going, well, this is all very nice, but, you know, what am I supposed to do? The next conversation with one of my team members, I'm supposed to go in and pour it all out. No, no, don't do that. This is not about indiscriminate emotional vomit. (laughs) That's good. That's a good one, too. (laughs) We get another ding ding on that one. Wait a minute, hold on. (laughs) it's not about indiscriminate emotional vomit this is not about going and puking your emotional stuff on people of course not it is about discernment so if you're going to be a leader and you're going to lead authentically you will have to have vulnerability your vulnerability has to be discerning and it has to be reciprocated so i don't pour out my innermost soul to everybody i meet but what i'm doing is i'm giving some and I watch for a reciprocity. Now, let me be clear here. Reciprocity is not equal. This is where people make mistakes. It's not equal. It's so, so it means is I might tell you about um, something that went on that was very painful in my childhood. You might tell me that you're struggling in your marriage right now. And I think, and it's not that I would, but I might think, well, mine was a level 10 uh, vulnerability and yours was a level two. That's not true. Courage is subjective. Yeah, yeah. If you've never been vulnerable before, if you've never discussed with a mentor who's walking with you the about, you know, even let anybody know you were struggling in your marriage, that is a 10 for you. Yeah. So yeah. I, so I've got to get my judgment out of the way and rather have compassion and then look for reciprocity in the vulnerability rather than vomiting my stuff, which now puts pressure on you to come at the same level. No, no, no. you got to come at your level. Am I going to nudge you along? Of course I am. But what happens is when you get to that place, you bond people to you. They become evangelical for you, for your leadership, and for your organization. And and that's the work that I do one-on-one. We're tearing away the layers. You know, I believe that people aren't broken. But we are diamonds who are covered in a lot of crap. And sometimes we've got to polish that diamond and pull the, you know, let it really shine. But when people shine, they are magnificent. And I promise you, you'll be a far better leader and a far more effective leader when you get those layers out of the way and you learn the emotional intelligence, which is part of our work in the training that we do, the emotional intelligence to know how to have the reciprocity and the discernment in your vulnerability. We are we are talking to Dov Barron, and he is all things leadership, and uh, we'll make sure that we put all of his, his contact information in our show notes for you. Dov, I'm going to ask you for a, for just the next couple of moments to take off your leadership hat. I know that's hard uh, for anybody to do that is that is a leader, and you, and I, truly you are you are a genuine leader, and you are a leader by I I think that you. I, I, I love the fact that I believe, truly believe that you were you were born this way because it's so hard to see. I can't imagine a a uh, a follower as Dove Barron, even as a kid. You were probably a, a leadership kid, weren't you? I was I was an odd kid, and I think that's where I learned <laughs> leadership, meaning that I just was this weird kid. Yeah. And and because of that, I didn't I, I didn't find anybody who who could be that for me. So I went to much older people for guidance. Right. Right. So I'm going to ask you to put off your take off your leadership hat for a second and put on your business owner hat. Uh, a number yeah. of the 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 um, listeners in our community, the um, nice guy community, they are um, entrepreneurs and business owners and business managers. They 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 need a little bit of relatability from uh, from the guests that are on the show. Not that what you have said so far has not been 100 percent relatable, but I want to actually put it into their world for a moment. So can we go through the series of five questions real fast and uh, and Please you can. Do. All right. So. So 
show. I'm going to ask you five questions. All you need to do is just give me a five to ten second answer, the first thing that comes to your mind. All right, you ready to sure. go? All right, here we go. All right, be relatable, Dove. Uh, what do you suck at? <laughs> That's a great question. What do I suck at? Um, I suck at um, physical organization. I've got a closet full of shit that I just it's been waiting two years for me to clear it out. <laughs> All right, that's good. That's good organization. That's a tough one. Uh, be transparent. When you first got going, how did you pay your bills? Uh, a lot of the time, I just freaked out about paying them. I uh, I paid them last minute. Uh, I struggled like crazy to pay them. Uh, how did I pay them? Um, I scrimped and I scraped. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Struggle is, is struggle is real sometimes. Uh, be confident. What do you do as an entrepreneur that's as good as it gets, Dove? Show up. I show up. I, I, I'm willing to show up when I feel like shit. I'm still willing to come and play full out. I'm still willing to be there for my clients, whether they're a corporate entity or whether it's an individual. I'm willing to always hold a vision of you that's bigger than anything you previously held of yourself. And I will hold you to that. I will hold it until you're big enough to step into it. That's where I rock it out of the box. Good answer. Uh, be humble, Dove. Well, what, um, what type of experts do you need to call upon to make shit happen when shit's just not happening? Um, I need help with organization. Uh, <laughs> Get that closet yeah. organizer. <laughs> Fortunately, no, not closet, but just like, you know, getting stuff physically organized. I always need help with that. And I ask for help with that. Um, I ask for help with uh, things like I, I don't, I was always the tech person for our company. And about seven or eight years ago, I realized I didn't have time for that, handed it off. Now I don't have a clue how to put it together. I know how to, the, the, the concept of it, know what I want, what I want the funnel to go, but I don't know how to put any of that together. I have got to have help. And the other thing I got to have help with is I'm super profic- um, prolific. I'm producing stuff all the time. If I don't have my team who can help me to distribute that, um, I, I'm dead in the water. I just would bury myself under my own creativity. Right, right. Uh, good one, too. Uh, all right, so last question here. As a business owner and as an entrepreneur, put these into priority order. So I'm going to give you four words, and your job is to put them into priority order with the first being the most, having the biggest priority. Okay, so here we go. Here are the four. Employees, customers, products, systems. <laughs> okay, uh, number one, without a doubt, is exactly what you said, employees. Number one, take care of your culture, take care of your people. Um, you don't have customers if you don't have a, if you don't have a product. So you've got to have a product first, and you've got to know what that is and be really clear about it. So that would be number two. I think you've got to know who your customer is. As number three, so really getting clear on who that customer is, mm-hmm. and then develop a, a for a system around how to deliver the the product to the customer, but making sure that your people are bonded to you, that they're bonded to the product, and that they're bonded to the people that they serve. So they always come first, take and, care of people first. And not surprising that you put uh, employees at the top of the uh, at the top of the chain. There being a, a leader of empl- of of people, so that would uh, that would make a lot of sense. Dove man, excellent job answering all the questions. Uh, I want to ask you a personal question, if I could, showing some of your uh, your genuine, authentic self. Uh, Absolutely. Do you have a a cell phone anywhere near you? Yes, sir. Okay, great. Do you have an iPhone or something inferior? I have an no, no, no judgment there. No bias whatsoever. That's good to see. I have, I have an iPhone right in front of me. All right, go to your, uh, go to your photo app. Tell me the last thing you took a picture of. Oh, I can do that. Let me look here. Last thing I took a picture of. Opening up my photos, and here we go. Photos. The last photo. Oh, that was a video. The last photo I took was. Uh, of myself and a friend, Tony Grabmeyer, who of the Tony G Show. All right, great. And uh, go to your texting app for a second and tell me the last text message you either sent or received. <laughs> this is good, man. <laughs> I like this. Thanks. I might steal this. this is You're good. welcome to steal it. <laughs> Thank you. Um, okay, last text. The last text um, that I sent or got. Okay, so the last 
what I sent or got was a thank you. Um, it was actually a reciprocal thank you. It's a thank you to uh, Lolly Daskal, who you may know. Yeah, absolutely. Who's a phenomenal leadership person. Um, I was thanking her for something, and she was thanking me for something. Uh, yep. She's a friend and a, an amazing woman. And if you're listening and you don't know who she is, Lolly Daskal, go look her out on Twitter. She's got about a million people following her on that. Quite literally, a million. Li- literally a million, a million followers. I think it's like one point yeah. one million. Dove, I'm going to ask you to build that to make that uh, that introduction for me, if you would. Sure, I'll introduce you to Lolly. My absolute pleasure. She's an absolute sweetheart and a member of the tribe. That is uh, that is great. So, uh, Dove, if our if our uh, listeners, if the Nice Guy community wanted to get t- in touch with you or learn a little bit more about what you do, uh, share the easiest place or the best place for them to reach out to you. Absolutely, uh, please, and thank you very much for asking. Uh, please take yourself over to fullmontyleadership.com. You can find all of my stuff there. Access to my blog. Um, we. Uh, Access to my podcast. My podcast is Dove Barron's Leadership and Loyalty Tips for Executives with the number one podcast for Fortune 500. You can find us on iTunes as well. Also on YouTube, Dove Barron for Monty Leadership. You can, of course, on Twitter at the Dove Barron. So I'm there at LinkedIn, of course. And, and you know what? If you would like to find out uh, uh, about working with me one on one as your mentor and guiding you, you can reach out to me directly. I'll give you my private email. It's dov, D-O-V, at D-O-V-B-A-R-O-N, dov at dovbaron.com. Reach out to me. Um, I'm happy to give you 20 minutes. We'll have a chat. We'll see if there's a fit. I pick my clients, and my clients pick me. It has to be mutual. We have to have a relationship. So reach out to me, and uh, I'm happy to serve you. And go find me online. Just put in Dove Baron, D-O-V-B-A-R-O-N, and Google. I'm sure you might be a little overwhelmed with all the stuff that's out there. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. when I Because uh, I, I always Google my, my guest to see, you know, I want to know if it's if it's a legit person that wants to come on the show or if it's a porn star. Now, if it's the porn star, they will get, uh, obviously, they will get priority over Of course. Else. Of course, of course. <laughs> that's leadership, my friend. Yeah, that is total leadership. I get to make the calls here. So, uh, Dove, thank you. Thank you so much for being a part of the uh, the show today. Thanks for being a part of our nice guy community, and thanks for all the contributions that you've made to uh, to leadership and to the C suite network. I know that uh, that Jeffrey uh, very much appreciates that as as uh, as I do as well. Well, thank you, my friend. Again, thank you for having me on. Thank you for allowing me to serve your audience, to serve the C suite audience. And I am here to serve. That's what I'm here for. So anything I can do to assist. Thank you. Oh, terrific. Nice guy community. Never underestimate the uh, the power of nice. Again, special thanks to uh, to Dove Barron for being a part of the show today. We'll make sure we have all of his information in the, in the show notes. Steve O'Brien, go ahead and take us out of here. Click on the Patreon link in the show notes. And for as little as $2 a month, you can help support the podcast and get access to fun bonus content. That's like half a cup of Starbucks coffee once a month, a grande, double shot, maybe a little flavoring. Thanks for listening. I mean, seriously, you need to cut back on your caffeine anyway.